The Joyful Friar podcast is made possible by the generous support of our friends. To support the podcast, please visit nathan-castle.com and donate today. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Joyful Friar podcast. I'm Father Nathan Castle, your host. I've been on a kind of a holiday. That's uh, I'm recording this on August the 8th, which is the Feast of St. Dominic. I took uh, the month of July off to relax a bit and do some other things, but I'm happy to be back with you today, especially on this major feast day. Of course, these are pre-recorded, so you'll be seeing this at, at a later date, but Today's a big day for everyone in the Dominican world because we honor the the guy that got this whole uh, family started. So he's one of those that we call a saint. And today, the story that I'm going to relate as the beginning of a trilogy is uh, of unlikely new martyr, new new uh, new saint. His name is Rodolfo. His story is told in uh, chapter 11 of my most recent Afterlife Interrupted book, uh, book three, Please Let Me Explain. We chose his and all the stories included in this particular volume because we thought that in the course of doing the work that we do to help a person move from level to level uh, along their way, he just explained things in such clarity that I just thought you might benefit by uh, hearing about it. Well, here's the the story of Rodolfo. <laughs> when when he came uh, in a dream, it was a very short dream. I received that dream on March twenty eighth of twenty twenty three, and here's what it was. I was standing next to a small truck. People were singing "Happy Birthday" as they stood in the back of it. Someone shot several of them from behind. And I awoke. That's all it was. Well, if you have followed this podcast, you know that our method is to, when I receive a dream like that, I write it down in a journal uh, to keep on the nightstand. Uh, Sometimes soon after, I get with prayer partners, uh, normally over Zoom anymore. That happened as a consequence of the pandemic when we couldn't be in the same room or travel. Um, so anyway, I go go online with, with some of my prayer partners. We go into protected prayer with St. Michael the Archangel, with Holy Mary, with, in my case, St. Dominic, our founder. A, a number of the saints, I just do the best I can to make sure that we're surrounded by uh, light and truth. And uh, then we get to work. I, I uh, welcome the person who brought the story. And very often we asked to speak to that person's guardian angel because they are really good at giving us a little clarity. That story was so short. Um, There's very little detail in it at all. And oftentimes we'll ask for the person's guardian angel to come through first and help help us have a little orientation to the story or to make clear something that was uh, not clear. Um, Well, in this case, the angel came through and used the name Adele. Remember, the angels don't have gender, so they're not masculine or feminine. They can present towards us as more one than the other. Uh, And sometimes their choice of a name might suggest uh, gender. But uh, Adele said she, I'm going to say she, chose that name because it was, it sounded like the word Del and was calling on a memory from my childhood of the little children's song, The Farmer and the Del. That Adele, she explained, was is a field very often uh, in a valley, and that the scene that this story took place in was in a valley, and the people in it were all uh, migrant farm workers. They were at the end of a workday in the back of a pickup truck, celebrating uh, the birthday or what what she called the birth anniversary of uh, the one that she cared for. Uh, was guardian of, uh, it it became clear to me, or at least if not clear, kind of a dawning, snagging sense that I think this happy birthday song is actually in Spanish. I live in Tucson, not very far from the the international border with Mexico. So um, border issues and uh, Spanish speaking uh, is quite common around here. 
Well, um, it turned out that that um, Rodolfo was shot and killed. Others were were wounded in this shooting. Uh, he was killed while they were singing happy birthday to him. And the reason that he was killed is because he took the side of some women who were being stolen from by coyotes. You might know that a lot of people who cross the border uh, do so with the assistance of people that uh, are called coyotes that that extract money from them very often at exorbitant rates to, to help them uh, escape notice as they cross into the United States. That's part of a criminal gang of, uh, of uh, criminal activities that start with, with drugs and manufacturing and distribution, but lots of other kind of extortion and other things that these uh, cartels get away with. But part of what, one way they make their money is uh, by victimizing people who are already desperately poor by taking some of what little they have. So we learned that Rodolfo, that I need to stop and say this. I'm, I've done this for 27 years. I know what it feels like to welcome a soul that has brought a story in a dream. But this time it made me wobbly, made me dizzy. The energy that was uh, around it was extraordinary, warm and uh, just of a, just of a very intense level. I don't know how else to explain it. And so I was thinking, I wonder if I'm dealing with somebody that's extraordinarily uh, exalted, lofty in some way. But what it turned out to be was that he was brought to us by what he called the, the cloud of witnesses. Um, the word martyr in Greek is the Greek word for a witness. That as It's a courtroom uh, word. When you call a witness in a Greek court, you call for a martyr. That's what the word means. Um, and Rudolfo explained that from the moment the bullet pierced him and killed him, he was scooped up and included in this cloud of witnesses. And they brought him to us. And so he was saying, it's not because I'm such a big deal, but I'm surrounded by all these powerful folk and they included me in their numbers. Some of them go back centuries to the time of their own uh, uh, martyrdom deaths. And he just said, it's, I, that's just, that's what you were feeling. You weren't feeling me necessarily. You were feeling the energy of all these uh, 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 holy martyrs. Well, he explained that he was, um, he, he was a farm worker. He was in the company of lots of other farm workers. He said some of them kind of tried to stay together as they moved from place to place because it was a migrant circumstance. Uh, other times it depended on who the hiring agent was as to who got picked to go where. But um, in any event, he was um, he became aware that there were a few women that he worked alongside of in in a field who on payday had some guys show up to steal part of their money. They felt entitled to it because they had helped these women cross the border and somehow felt that that entitled them to a part of their wages ever after. The women complained to others around them that the others got to keep all their pay, but we have to give part of it to this guy that always comes in and uh, demands it from us. Well, Rodolfo heard that and he just thought that's so unjust and cruel. These women are doing all this uh, backbreaking stoop labor in fields uh, working hard all day only to have these guys come along and steal from them. He explained to us that he said, um, it's not that I never saw an injustice that I ignored or felt that there was nothing I could do about. He just said this time I knew their names and I knew these guys that came after them. And when I learned that that's what was going on, he just said, I couldn't allow that to happen without opposing it. He didn't think that he was doing some grand thing um, or that he did it for a particularly religious motive, although he explained to us that he was Catholic, as I am, um, that he went to church, but he said, I didn't stay there. I went there to go to mass and go home. Uh, he said, I took part in religious festivals, especially ones around Our Lady of Guadalupe. 
rosary processions and different festivals and things. He said, so I practiced my faith. But he said, the part of it that I'm that I cared the most about were the Jesus stories. He said that he he heard the Jesus stories and and what he most appreciated was very many of them occurred in fields and with poor people. That Jesus wasn't so much, um, he wasn't even welcome at his own synagogue. He was kicked out of the synagogue early in his story. He certainly wasn't welcome at the temple in Jerusalem where um, he was posed. But he said very often Jesus would be among poor people, often landless people, who hardly ever had enough to eat, and he would feed them. They hardly ever had access to good medical care, but he would cure them. There were some of them who were thought to be illegal, in the wrong place, or the wrong kind. Um, and he would cross borders and include people that others thought he should exclude. And especially he felt like he appreciated the the um, the way that Jesus did not take part in the minimization of women. He he said, "I was proud to be of Mexican and Mexican Marin and heritage because there are a great many goods uh, in our culture, music and dance, and different aspects of uh, Mexican and Mexican American culture." But he said one thing I didn't like about it at all was the machismo. The, the uh, embedded cultural idea that men can boss women around and that that somehow makes them more manly. He said, I didn't take part in that and I didn't like it when I saw it. And he said, when I heard the Jesus stories, I noticed that he also lived in a culture where, uh, very much controlled by men, but he didn't let them tell him that he couldn't treat women with respect and treat women well, look them in the eye and talk to them and so on, uh, pay attention to them. He said that was the thing that he admired. Well, when he learned about this um, corruption, this domination and thievery going on right under his nose, he said, I, I could ignore injustice as well as the next person and feel like it's too big and I'm too small. There's nothing much I can do about it. That's just the way things are. He said, this time I just couldn't do that. Or I chose not to. He said, I knew their names. They were right there with me. And I felt like here I have to make my stand. He, he knew that in doing so, he would create powerful enemies. He said, I knew that there could be a bullet with my name on it, but for a while, um, there was no bullet until one day there was. He was even kind of grateful in a kind of sardonic way that the bullet did its job well and didn't leave him paralyzed for decades. He said that the bullet did what it was designed to do. It it went through my body and killed me quickly. But then he um, he spoke about his experience of that and he did it by referencing, this is crazy, he referenced the carnival game Whack-A-Mole. You ever played that? You know, it's, it's uh, you have a little mallet and these moles pop up and, and how quickly you knock them down, you score points. He said, well, they whacked me, which is a, I'm used to that um, verb being used in like Godfather movies or, you know, somewhere where a hired killer whacked somebody, killed them. Uh, intentionally and sought them out to, to kill them. He said, they whacked me like whack-a-mole. But he said, while I was hitting the ground or as I hit the ground, I popped back up. And he said, isn't that fun? He's talking about the minute, <laughs> the second that he's murdered. And he said, isn't that fun? I just love that. Um, I'm, I've been a lifelong Catholic and, uh, and, you know, 45 years now in Dominican, one of the most, the, the holiest week of our year includes Good Friday, which we call good, the day that uh, that Jesus Christ is crucified gruesomely, publicly, to shame and, and threaten everybody around him. And then, you know, three days later, he pops back up. Anyway, I love that because it 
uh, it it gives me the courage to um, do things that might come at a cost. Nothing on the order of Rodolfo, but in my own little world, um, you know, I, I just take courage from that story. And and he used the word courage, and he said, "I I didn't do what I did because I was so religious. I just did it because it was right." And he said, "If you think I I uh, ex exhibited." extraordinary courage i didn't i just used the courage that was available to me that's available to anyone else can't you just do what's right because it's right that's one of the things he said i loved how plain spoken he was um in all of these stories we have this element of helping them uh, make an elevation a crossing a transition of some kind that's that's always from from where they are to something even better. For some Catholic folks will uh, think of that in terms of uh, leaving purgatory and going into heaven, if you want to think of it as having a very defined border. Um, that's okay by me. Uh, it's it's all a mystery, but it involves some sort of movement, some elevation, uh, transition that's that's from uh, good to better. Um, he, but he, he also talked about his um, his nature, he said, the body that I'm in now is different from the body that I was in, the one that got shot. And he said, uh, I, right away, I was, I was more like a cloud. And he said, and then all these other ones surrounded me and I was in the cloud with them. But then he said, before long, I learned how to be more solid if I want to be, but I have to choose it. So he said, my natural state now is to be in this cloud, but I can also be more solid if I want to be. So he 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 was musing and trying to explain to us what that was like from his point of view. And he said, maybe it's like water. Uh, it can be a vapor. And when it is, it's a cloud. And he said, the wind blows clouds around the sky. And I think that's what is going to happen to me today. The wind of the Holy Spirit is going to blow me from uh, where I am now to where the next place that I'm to be. And I'm going to go there with all these other people. He said, I, but I have learned how to be more solid if I need to be. Kind of the way that the the vapor of water can condense into drops of water and then maybe from drops of water into chunks of ice. Anyway, he didn't spend a lot of time on that, but he was just kind of telling us a little about that. Um, he was amazed that he was included in this cloud of witnesses that go back centuries. He said, all I did was what I told you. And then suddenly I'm, I'm elevated while I was falling. I was being lifted up. Um, he he mostly uh, i feel like the message that he mostly wanted us to have is really simple can't you just do the right thing because it's the right thing he also said um i didn't have very much but i had my life he said i didn't want to wake up to a day that included letting this injustice go on under my nose he said, I knew that they could kill me, and I had no control over that. But I did have control over waking up to a day when I knew that I did what is right for these women that didn't deserve this maltreatment. And that gave him peace. So I find that inspiring. Maybe you do too. Well, as you know, in these trilogies, I really just share the basics of the story, which I think I've done here. Um, next time we'll go into compassionate response to this story. What does it evoke in people who read it and hear it? Uh, what might I, I be able to contribute to, to that? Compassion means to suffer with, and there was a lot of suffering in this story. He also mentioned that many of his friends are still alive upon the earth and are still working so hard to, to scratch out an existence. Um, so the, the, we'll deal with compassionate response to this story next time and then after that i'll move into what we call spiritual practice does this story evoke some sort of um, prayerful or spiritual practice that rodolfo inspires and that might uh, help us be better versions of ourselves for having gotten to know him at all so that's it for right now kind of a brief uh, introduction to the rodolfo story if you want to know it in greater detail 
it's uh it's chapter 11 of book three i listened to it on the audible this morning before going into this podcast just to have it fresh in my mind uh rodolfo did say at the end that um he uh he he said to dave who uh one of my prayer partners who helped with the the second conversation with him said i would i'd like to get to know you later uh, after you make your journey um but i also said to him well no need to to wait we can do that at least in prayer right now so i've i've involved uh, uh invoked him in prayer this morning and asked him to uh to be with any of us who listen to his story and find that it touches our heart and maybe stirs us to some sort of action so Remember that if you uh, want to be in touch with me, the best way to do that is through my website, nathan-castle.com. Just go to the contact form there and let me know uh, how to be in touch with you. I especially like to know uh, what time zone you live in in case I can just give you a call. I, I prefer that to doing a bunch of long email. And I don't like, like uh, I, I prefer that people at least have read one of my books before um, doing that kind of contact because often the questions that they have are answered in the books. Nevertheless, uh, I'm grateful for your attention. Remember that I keep you in prayer on a regular basis when I pray for anyone who um, listens to or views these podcasts, that I pray that the Lord would be like uh, uh, the, the Holy Spirit, it's like breath, air, or like water, mist, like Rodolfo was talking about today, like vapor that seeps in and finds its way into cracks and crevices. If there's parts of you that are wounded and uh, and that you try to keep out of sight, the Holy Spirit can make its way in there uh, with your permission. So I pray for for healing and growth and, uh, and, and freedom and joy, especially in uh, your life. So for right now, um, adios. I'm Father Nathan Castle. Thank you for being a part of this episode of the Joyful Friar podcast. I know. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Joyful Friar. Please like, follow, and subscribe. You can visit me at nathan-castle.com. Send me a message by clicking the contact button. God bless.